Hello, here we are. We're on Uncut Silos, straight to the motherfucking point today. We are testing out these fucking private servers. And we're gonna see what it's about. We're gonna see what it's about. And we're gonna test it by running a silo on it. Now, while we're running said silo, sorry, I'm eating, we are going to talk about, <laughs> we're going to talk about, um, you know, basically how I was right, you know, pat myself on the back a little bit, basically pat myself on the back a little bit, okay, it looks, looks like a map, there's vents going up, I can literally do nothing. I can't. How do I invite people here? How do we invite? I don't know how to invite people to my server. You know, frankly, I, I don't. I don't care either. Adam Shop. Um, might as well get all my things. Lock for free. Lock for free. All these wonderful things that I got for free. All right. Well, either way, this is Ron on Casalos, and we're gonna we're gonna test these motherfucking servers. We're gonna test these motherfucking servers. And uh, so we're gonna talk about it a little bit here too, right? Like if you're unaware, there's a whole Fallout first thing. It's a subscription model for Fallout, it's very much like ESO Plus, marketed poorly. You get some atoms, you get a free private server. Well, it's not free. It's for 14 bucks a month if you're in the U.S. You get a private server, you get some atoms, you get a bunch of stuff that you just saw me get. A scrap box that people think is pay to win that allows you to carry all the junk you want and weighing it out to zero. Also, we're leaving camp budget, which is pretty cool. So, you get some of that stuff. But the only thing I give a shit about is knowing is the private server, right? And multiple reasons why it is the only thing I give a shit about. First of all, eight player slots, including the server owner. So, seven Seven people total, so, you know, um, you plus seven of your friends can get on and play. Two, basically two, two fire teams. Not great. For large com communities, absolutely useless and garbage. There is no reason for anybody who has a large community or is a streamer or, like, you know, plays with several, you know, dozens of people, no reason to ever be on this thing. Now, objectively, we can assume that this is just the start. We can assume that if it goes over well and everything works out as intended, the server's slots will go up, you know, so on and so forth. All that stuff will happen. Great, grand, wonderful. The core problem I have with it, and there's a lot of people that are angry. There's a lot of people on the internet that are angry about the whole thing. And quite frankly, I don't, I don't really care about them. Let them be angry. A lot of pay to win stuff. A lot of people angry about like, uh, you know, junk, being able to carry all of the junk you want. Stupid argument. And I haven't seen or read any argument that makes any real sense. Um, about the scrap box being paid to win. You know, caps and advantages and ruining the economy. <laughs> it's just, I don't get it. I don't get it. Maybe there's a sect of people that really rely on junk. And that's really how they make their money. But, I mean, I would argue that it's a really inefficient way to do, to do that kind of thing. Now, if you're curious, 
You can literally do nothing with this server, except get on it and play. There's no admin commands, there's no special features, you can't spawn items, you literally can do nothing but get on and play it. It is your own personal world that operates, excuse me, I'm eating, operates the same exact way as the public servers. So, for $14.99 mon a month, or $13.99 a month plus tax, you get this server, you get some atoms, which cost more, you get like $17 worth of atoms. Uh, and a bunch of other stuff. And the scrap box. Cool. Now, it is important to realize that this decision was made purely, right now, to cater towards casual players. Right? Most people, like I said in my last video, do not have 25 people that they can just call into a server and go and play with. That doesn't exist for most people. So having it be lower with ideally, or, you know, assumed to be lower cost uh, for the slots uh, that are available, eight, seem to be the move, right? More, you know, most, they have to charge more money they would have to charge more money for more slots. It's just how it is, right? It costs more to house more people on a server. So, by lowering the overall amount, it's more, it's accessible, more accessible to more people. So, It makes sense for them right now. Eight gets them the most. Now, why? Maybe it's a test period. I'm sure it's a test period. I'm sure that number will go up. Or we'll get options. Like maybe, you know, maybe you don't need 24. Maybe you need 15. Maybe you can get a 15 slot server. And that'll certainly be a thing. Without question, that will be a thing that will be doable in this game eventually. But with that, though, is going to come a higher price point. If you want more slots on your server, you're going, to, you're going to pay more money. And that's something people have to realize. And the price of the server, is it's in the ballpark of what a normal private server would cost most people. Uh, most private servers are about a dollar a slot. This is obviously a little bit more. But it's not bad. Like it's affordable. But, you know, we can assume that if you need a 24-person server... You're probably going to be paying about $35 a month. It's a decent chunk of change. A decent chunk of change. I will say that the server is going very fast right now, which I like. So it's important to keep that in mind. And hopefully with that higher price point, Hopefully with that higher price point, they go out of their way to spend some time with the influx of money as well that they're going to have. With the influx of money that they're going to have. You spend some time working on some sort of access thing or something like that, or a way to potentially have all the servers up at the same time. So not just me being here, but you know, I have a server that anybody I give access to can get on and play, right? I don't have to be in the server. Currently, if I'm not on the server, nobody can get in and do anything, right? I have to be on it for the server to launch. If I'm not on the server, the server just doesn't exist in the world. Once I'm on it, apparently I couldn't figure out how I can invite people to it and they can get on and play and do whatever. And if I leave the server, the server will stay up. If you are a Fallout Plus member, Fallout First they call it. If you are a Fallout First member, you can stay on the server. If you're not, apparently you get booted. Now... 
I don't know what that means. If I crash, is there some downtime? Is there like a minute that you get for me to get back in the server and get back in there and not have any problems? Before it just boots everybody out? Or does it crash? Do I crash? And does everybody lose out? Right? Say we're doing queen. Say we're doing queen. What happens then? We don't know. And we'll test it. We'll figure it out. But servers literally just came back up, you know, 10 minutes ago. So we don't know yet. We'll definitely figure it out, though. I will say that this server is running very smooth. This has been a very smooth silo run. Now, does that mean anything right away? No. It means that this particular run was nice. That's all that means, is that I, had, I, got, an, I got a good server. It's going to take multiple servers, multiple silos, to figure out if, if I got lucky, or if the private servers are just good. And if they're good, that gives me hope. It definitely gives me some... a moment of hope, I guess. A fleeting moment. Because often what happens, and what's been happening with this game since I've been playing it, so for about eight or nine months now, is that Bethesda does a thing geared towards casual players, leaving large communities and hardcore players in the dust, leaving them to be forgotten about, and they, you know, Focus on where the money is, right? There's more casual players than there is hardcore in-game players. That's all there is to it. So they go where the money is and they focus on that. And then the end-game community is left saying, well, maybe it'll get better. Maybe it's just the beginning. Maybe it'll be different sooner or later. Yeah, maybe. I can't name one instance yet where that has become true. I cannot name one single thing where that has been said. Whether it's about drops, whether it's about loot, instances, content, raids. Um, where, you know, the endgame community was like, well, maybe it'll get better. I'm still waiting for all that stuff to get better. History tells us that it likely won't get better. Because it hasn't before, so why would it now? Right? Arguably, the only thing that got semi-fixed to a degree was when the servers were really bad a long time ago. And that affected everybody. That wasn't just endgame oriented. Literally, everybody was affected by that. So of course they're going to fix it. The people that pay their bills were being affected, and sooner or later, those bills wouldn't be paid, right? So it's important to keep in mind that these decisions are rooted in money and rooted in, you know, putting food on people's plates, right? If it's not making money, it cannot exist. So... That's the objective way of looking at it. Can I be subjectively upset? Of course I can be. Of course I can be subjectively upset. I don't give a shit. You know, I, well, I shouldn't say that. I do give a shit. But I can be upset that the way I want to play is not being catered to. I can also be upset that... A lot of the community, which, you know, we're small, we're not as big as casual players, but, you know, we are players as well, and a lot of us spend a lot of money and time in the game, and we're going to be Fallout First members, that our needs are not being met, and we're feeling ignored, and it's the same thing over and over again, the same lip service of, you know, we're working on it, we're doing the thing, you know, Soon, sooner than you think, which this was sooner than we thought, because I thought never, and I said that, and, I, and 
you know, I didn't expect it to be this. I thought it would be a little bit better. I thought it would be more of what we needed. Um, but there's hardly ever ch any real change that occurs in, with Bethesda in 76 for this community, for endgame players, for hardcore players. Very little. It's a shame. So, is this good overall? Is Fallout first a good thing? I think so. I think so. It doesn't mean that my needs and my wants for this game are going to be met. No. But it does mean that there is consistent flow of money coming in now. Potentially, depending on how many people sign up. It could be a giant flop. A consistent flow of money that keeps the game funded. Keeps the devs working. And it keeps us with... You know... A game to play. And this server just set a new record. Come on. Come on. We did it. The server did it. It was fast. Fast. And I probably should have waited about another two seconds, but that's still six seconds faster with a mishap in the, in the server. That's kind of what it comes down to, right? I mean, that's, that's kind of my thoughts. That's kind of my thoughts on it. You know, it's a good thing overall. It's exactly what I expected it to be. Don't expect the price point to be the same when they offer more slots. Expect none of that. It will go up. The scrap machine is not pay to win, and if you think it is, you're wrong. You're simply wrong. You can play the game as you have been for the past year without paying for Fallout first. You know, none of this is required. But what it does is provide a steady source of income for the devs to hopefully make things better. Oh, there you go, there's some Discord sounds. Anyway. New record on a private server. Like I said, it doesn't mean anything yet. I'm going to try a few more runs, but there it is. 10, 11, 07. Probably, I got I to gotta watch the video again, but it's probably closer to like 10, 13. Just still about five seconds off the time. There's Discord again. My shit's blowing up. I forgot to mute it. Anyway, guys, this has been Rolling on Cut Silos from the private servers in solidarity. I'll see you next time.